We have locks on our doors. We have locks on our windows to protect ourselves from theft. We have alarm systems to alert us of unwanted, an unwanted guest. Many of us have been robbed in our peace. We've been robbed of our peace. That's why we're always in turmoil. Many of us have been robbed of our joy because that's why we're always discouraged. Many of us have been robbed of our purpose because we don't know who we are and we don't know where we're going. And, and we're, we've been robbed of our resources, struggling to make ends meet. Generations of children have been robbed of their innocence and they have, have been left to raise themselves so that's what I want to talk to you about today, recovering what the enemy stolen and taken from you. John had no clue what I was going to preach about when he talked about coming down. There's a lot of theft been going on. So I want to talk to you today about turning your defeats into victories. I want to read two verses, and I want to tell you a story. First Samuel chapter 30, verses 1 and 2. Chapter 30, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says that David and his men arrived at Ziglag on the third day. The Amalekites had raided the Negev and attacked and burned Ziglag. They also had kidnapped the women and everyone in it from the youngest to the oldest. They had killed no one but had carried them off as they went on their way. If you've been ripped off of something spiritually and it's affecting you physically, the only way you're going to resolve it is by looking to the spiritual side to get your stuff back that has been stolen. Our story is about David. David is, has, is now in the Philistine territory because he's running from King Saul. Uh, one day everything is looking fine. Everything is okay. He's hiding from Saul, but everything is okay. And then their world, their world gets raided and everything gets turned upside down because an enemy snuck in when they weren't looking and stole everything they had. Everything. Listen to me. When the enemy comes in, he sneaks in. He catches us unaware, and, be, and our world is turned upside down. And they burnt the whole town with fire. It was total destruction. What they had built up, what they had developed, where they were now, what they were calling home, when they get there, they find what has been done. And what they discover is, in this story, is a major theft. And David and his men come back to find that their world has collapsed and it's burned with fire and their wives, their sons and their daughters, everything has been taken. Nothing was left according to verse 3. David and his people, when they get there in verse 4, it said they lifted up their voices and they wept until they could not weep no more. They cried till they could not cry any more tears. They sobbed till they could sob no more. And they lost all their strength. They were crying because their hope had been destroyed. Dreams had been turned into nightmares because now their life that they've been living has been turned into a disaster area. When you lose everything that matters to you, life begins to close in on you. And that was David's situation. And also for his men, they wept till they could weep no more. There was no strength left in them. They had cried so much. Verse 6 said that David was greatly distressed because the people spoke of stoning him because they had lost everything. You get the picture they can't cry anymore. David can't cry anymore. He has no more tears. He's just sobbing and no tears. He's crying on what the enemy's done. He lost two wives in this raid. Now his friends have turned against him. He's not talking about the people who burned the city. He's talking about the people that rode with him. When they saw the mess, they had to find somebody that they could take it out on. And they decided they'd take it out on their leader. If we would have been here when the enemy came, we would have been able to defend ourselves. But everything we've got is gone now. It was chaos. 
David was weeping. The men were weeping. He's discouraged. The men are discouraged. He has his own problems. He's lost everything. But now he's carrying the weight of everybody else. They're blaming him because they're hurting. It is a group pain. Everybody's feeling it. David tells us four things that he did that went from defeat to victory. First thing he did was verse 6. He strengthened himself in the Lord. Despite his emotional shambles, his difficulties, he doesn't have his wives there, nor his stuff. Everything's gone. What was left has been leveled with fire and his friends have turned against him. The Bible said that David got in the presence of the Lord. That's how he strengthened himself. He got in the presence of the Lord. Nobody else could help him. And he got into the presence of the Lord. He was out there all by himself facing everything that he was facing. And he's talking to himself in the presence of the Lord. He might have been distressed. He might have been in the dumps. He might have been crying and weeping. But he drags all of that into the presence of God. He wasn't going to let discouragement what had been robbed from him drag him away from the presence of God so he goes to the presence of God that's where we've been this morning in the presence of God David was saying feelings come on go with me pain come on and go with me discouragement come on go with me I may be beat down, I may be broke down, I may be beat up, but I'm dragging all of y'all with me. We're going into the presence of the Lord. And now when he got into the presence of the Lord and when he found God, he got in his presence, he asked two questions. He inquired of the Lord, shall I pursue the people that robbed us? And shall I overtake them? So when David gets into the presence of God, he asks him two questions. Shall I go after these crooks who's ripped me off, these robbers, and if I go after them, shall I win? Why is he asking these two questions? He doesn't even know who they are. I'm not sure that he asks the right questions. He says, do I pursue them and will I win? He don't even know who they are. You know why he doesn't know who they were? He weren't there. I don't know which way they're going. I don't know where they are. I don't know who they are. And David is saying, am I going to waste my time, God, going after what the enemy has stolen from me? Is it worth it trying to get back what the enemy has? has stolen. He doesn't know which way they've gone. He doesn't know what to do. He is in a bad situation. When the enemy comes in and rips you off and you don't know what to do and you don't know anybody who can tell you what to do, that's when the Lord wants to show up in your life and direct you. He wants to be the only person in your life that's going to direct you in the way you ought to go. It's an opportunity for you to discover God on a deeper level because if if you've been, when you've been ripped off, let me tell you, you don't pray vague prayers. Amen. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord. No, you don't pray prayers like that. When life has shut down on you and all your hopes have been burned up, somebody here today, your hopes have been burned up. You, you're praying for the real. This is the need, God. This is the problem, God. This is the situation, God. This is the pain, God. This is the mess, God. And what should I do? This is when you need a specific word for your mess. And that's what God is doing. He's inquiring of the Lord, what shall I do? Where shall I go? So David gets into the presence of the Lord. That's the first thing he did was he got in the presence of the Lord. The second thing he did, uh, David did when his life had fallen apart, He inquired a word from the Lord. He got in the presence of the Lord. He asked the Lord, 
do I go after them? And if I go after them, when I w- will, will I win? And here's the word of the Lord. Pursue them. When we got in the presence of the Lord this morning, we heard two words from God. It was directed to people's lives. God said three things to David when David got in his presence. Pursue them. You will overtake them. And you'll rescue all. Other words, go after them, find them, you'll bring them back. He inquired of the Lord. He said, God, what shall I do? He got clarification on what he ought to do. Now, now, I, I got to tell you, I'm an innocent bystander reading a story. It seems to me kind of like the bank does when you don't have enough money to cover what you just wrote. Insufficient information. <laughs> now, did you, did you hear God tell him where to go? He said, God, I can't see. He said, God, do I pursue them? And God said, yes. And then, and will I win? And God said, yes. God said, you'll recover it all. Now, where does he go? Which direction? Who was it? <laughs> Let me throw this out right here. I believe God has always got a word with your name on. Now, there is a general word for everybody because the word of God applies to everybody. I believe the two words we heard today could apply to everybody in this house. But I also believe that if you let the Holy Spirit burn it in you, that it was for you. I see that. See, the word of God applies to everybody, but the word of God doesn't tell you your word. God has to burn that into your spirit, how you are to act in the application of the word and in the specific situation. You inquire of the Lord to get a specific application, but the Holy Spirit burns it into your spirit, what you should do. Now, now, now see what am I trying to say to you. You can watch the national news, and Debbie likes to watch the weather channel, and she'll get on there. But here's what she tells me. They're not saying nothing about where we live. No, they don't. They tell you various regions about what the weather's going to be like. If you want to know what the weather's like in your town, I got an app on my telephone that tells me that I can look up Auburndale. You got to go to the local news. You got to get the local news where it's in your town, specific about where you live in detail. You come to church for national news. The sermon is applied to everybody, but you need the Holy Spirit to give you local information about how it applies to where you are, to what your circumstances are all going through, and it, it, it has to be news with your name on it. I believe God was giving some news to somebody in the house today, local news. God said to David, pursue them. You will find them, and you will rescue what you lost. Our house was broke into quite a few times when we first moved here. It was pretty much a random thing. Our house got broke into a lot, didn't it, baby? And I never knew who broke into our home. I never knew who it was. David come home the first time our house was broken into, and he said, Mama, did you get in such a hurry that you pulled out everything? You pulled out your drawers and pour, your, your dresser drawers and poured everything on the floor? Was you finding, did you find it? And she says, I don't think so. You need to leave. <laughs> I didn't know who it was. I asked the Lord to show me. And he asked me what I was going to do about it. I said, Take care. Sometimes he gives you a specific word. Sometimes, what did he say to David? Pursue it. Pursue it. Pursue it. You'll win, and you'll get it all back. God gave him specific information. Go. If God only tells you a little bit, a little bit's all you need. If you don't use the revelation and the illumination 
that you've all, that God has already given to you. Rarely does God give you any more data up front. More, more won't be coming, and He doesn't unfold everything, and He doesn't unfold all the information. As you move with the information, He gives you more. He wants you to walk in faith, not sight, to learn to trust, walk in trust, not because you have seen the end. God works through a process. So, so what's the first thing that he did? He got into the presence of the Lord. Second thing was he inquired of the Lord. God, I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. I need a word. The third thing he did was he obeyed the word. Verse 9 and 10. David got a word from the Lord. What was he supposed to do? Go after them. You'll find them and you'll recover them. So what is he saying to him? I'm telling you today, when God gives you a promise, you can jump on the horse and ride it. David gets on a horse. He gets 600 of his men and they pursue. They're looking for an unknown cause of his problem, what he lost. But he has no idea where he's going. He just gets on a horse like a madman and starts moving. Why? Because God said go. They made it to the brook Besor where 200 men were so exhausted they said we can't go any further. So 400 men pursued. They're riding, looking for, (laughs) they don't know what they're looking for. All they know is David come out and said, I got a word from the Lord. He said, let's go, guys. They said, let's go. The Lord said, we'll win, and we're going to bring it all back. All right. You know, not a one of them said, which way are we going, David? They said, let's go. They're looking for something God told David, pursue, and they went. They're riding, but they don't know where they're going, but they're moving. So what's the fourth thing that David did when his life had fallen apart? He stopped and blessed someone as he followed the Lord. They're riding, looking for something, some kind of enemy. What do you think he looks like? I don't know. Do you think we'll, do you think we'll recognize him? I don't know. Well, let's look for our stuff or something that will guide them along the way. And verse 11 said they ran up on an Egyptian that was sitting in a field. The men brought him to David. David gave him a fig cake, two clusters of raisins, and water to drink. And the young boy said, I haven't eaten In three days or three nights. While David is trying to pursue an enemy that he does not know where he's going, yet he stops to help someone along the way that's in a bad situation. Now watch David. David says in verse 13, To who do you belong to? And where where are you from? Very simple question. Who are you and where do you live? Well, we find him side of the road. Who are you? Got to watch this. And he answered and said, I'm a young man of Egypt, a servant of an Amalekite. And my master left me behind three days ago because I got sick. He just left me out here to die. He begins to tell David in verse 14, we made a raid on the Negev, that which belongs to Judah. And not only that, we burned Ziglag to the ground. (laughs) David's been riding. He don't even know where he's going. He didn't have GPS. God said, "Go, go get him, you'll win. You'll get it all back. And David gets on his horse and just starts riding. That's us men, ain't we? We we ain't got to have a direction. We'll just go find it. And then Debbie finally says, well, the directions say here. We don't have to have directions to put things together, even though we have 15 or 20 parts left over when it's done, do we? No, no, no. And David says, 
Who are you? Where are you from? And he says, I'm just, I'm a young man of Egypt. I, 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 I'm a servant of a, 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 a Malachite. My master left me here three days ago because I was sick. He just left me here to die. And then he begins to tell him, he said, we were on a raid and we were down in the Negev. And then not only that, we went through this place and we burnt, we burnt Ziglag all the way to the ground. David didn't ask that boy for that information. All he said was, is, who are you and where are you from? That's all he wanted to know. David wasn't going to ask him, do you know who robbed me? Boy, I'm going to beat it out of you. You tell me who robbed me. He wouldn't have known. God, oh my, hallelujah. David would have, if David would have stayed in the camp, he'd have never found out where to go. All God said was go, and he went. And if he would have not pursued, then he would have never found what the enemy took. Or, or, or he didn't have an idea where he was going. He didn't know who he was looking for. He would not have received any other word. God said go, go, go. God said get up and go. Get what the enemy's taken from him. God wasn't going to bring it to him. He said, get it. Now, why did I tell you that? Middle of the night when I was writing all this, God said, yeah, you're begging me to bring it to you. I ain't bringing it to you. I've already provided everything you need, and you just go get it. Go get it. Go get it. When David pursued, it's when he got an additional information. I'm talking to somebody right now. You've been asking God about a whole lot of stuff, and God gave you a word, but you're still sitting on that word like a hen trying to, uh, trying to uh, uh, hatch that egg. God gave you a specific word, and you're sitting around. Well, that ain't enough. God ain't going to give you no more till you do exactly what he said to tell you to do. He, he is now... David knows who did it. Did God tell him? Some little boy on the side of the road that has been there for three days that his master left him because he got sick. <laughs> when he pursued, not only does he know who did it, he has a contact now, according to verse 15. And not only does he have a contact, now he has a guide that says, I know where they're going, and I can take you where they're going, and I can show you where they are. I can take you where they've got everything that was taken from you. Now David knows it all. And David asks God, do I go after them, and will I win? And God says, if you'll pursue, you'll find them and recover all. Then he finds a little boy sitting on the side of the road who has been discarded by his master because he's sick. So what God does on his way to bless blessing David to give back what he's lost. He gave him an opportunity to be a blessing while he was on his way to blessing somebody else. If David would not have been willing to stop. Now I'm going to tell you, when you're on the mission, you ain't got time to stop. Fool around mess. I thought, we ain't got time to stop. We got to keep going. Where are you going? I don't know, but we got to keep going. We got to keep moving. We got to find them. They got it all. And then, you know, if David would have not taken the time to stop along the way, if he would say, don't pay attention to the sick boy on the side, we don't have time we on a mission I gotta get to my blessing how many of us have walked over opportunities to be a blessing to somebody because we're looking for our own blessing there was nothing about the boy that would make David think he could help him but because David was willing to stop and help him who was worse off than he was because he would have died I believe that God just in his Wisdom knew what was going on, and when David pursued, here's three days ago. Here's a little boy already there. What you need, if you'll step out, is already waiting for you if you'll step. I don't know when, I don't know how long it was before he got to them, but I still think it was the same day. It doesn't say that it was a time span. He he left out pursuing. If you'll do, if you'll if you'll respond to what God has said, I'm here to tell you today that if you'll take one step, he'll he'll show you the other step. And the, and the information it's already out there. It's already waiting for you there. He's already put it there. And, and so you know, David David was willing to stop. To, and, and 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 the thing is, is when he stops and helps this boy, uh, everything David. David needed was right there. He maybe he didn't look like he would be any benefit to David. When you become rich, 
You go buy a brand new car. You pay cash for it. And you ride up to the red light. Somebody's driving a jalopy. You better not get this. I knew that used to be there. We, yeah, I drove a car that the floorboard was rusted out on Debbie's side, and she'd had this kind of spreader till I could find some tin and, and screw into there so, she, so her feet wouldn't fall through. It was that bad. You know, we had a car like that. Had a first gear, second gear, no third gear. I don't know what was wrong. There was just no third gear. So you'd go first, you'd wind first up and second, wind second as tight as you could, and then just put it over in fourth. Because I don't care what you did. You could, no clutch, put it right in third gear, and boom, boom. I mean, there was no third gear. Little, little, whatever kind of little, little two-door Opal station wagon. Came from New York. <laughs> Where all the salt came from, Carissa. It had rusted the whole bottom up, but I got it for $150. I had to work hard for $150 to buy that little car. It was paid for. So now when you when you start riding in your new vehicles because you make it across and God does something, God's going to bless some of the people in this church. I'm going to tell you right, God's going to bless us because we're going to be a blessing to somebody else. And, and when you get in that nice car and that fancy car, don't you start looking over again and saying, yeah, yeah, I used to be like that, but not anymore. Why don't you go buy them one like you got? Mm, well, I, I sidetracked there. David stopped and he bl Debbie wants to give every person that stands on the side of the road with a sign. You know what the sign says, don't you? <laughs> I got another one here. Debbie, will, I, I'll say, I ain't got no. She plunders through, well, here's 50 cent. Give it to her. Debbie, I know what they're going to do. They're going to put it in a paper sack and go, <laughs> and then they got the ring and spray paint around there. I said, I know what they're going to do with it. <sighs> I know what they're going to do with it. No! I'm the one that has to give it to him. And I give it to him smiling. And he's looking at me like saying thank you. And I, the whole time, is, I, I want to look at him and say, I don't want to give it to you. But I got to go home with her, not you. I got to go home with her. And she said to give it to you. And I know you're going to blow it. I was going to school and I was riding over and I was, I was traveling every Thursday to Tampa. And I did that for two years, going to school every Thursday. And one Thursday morning, I was going to class and I was running behind. And, and I rode up to the red light there down on Hillsborough and whatever that road was. And there was a guy with a sign standing on the side of the road. I need a beer, no lie. That's the sign he was holding. I need a beer, no lie. And, and, and I saw an old pickup, a jalopy. <laughs> That's the kind of people that help you out. People that ain't got nothing. I saw the truck drive over and I heard him blow his horn. I, like, I got one over here, run. Somebody will help you out. You just got to find the right person. So here's this little boy. And all David did was stop and give him some food and said, Who are you? Where are you from? Everything he needed to know, this little boy told him, this young man, who burns Ziglag with fire. And David said, where's your people? And the boy said, I'll lead you. I'll take you there on the way back. So now David is on his journey. Now, does he already know he's going to win the battle? Because God told him when he inquired back over here in his presence. Now David's on the battlefield. But I've lost 200 men. I've only got 400 men. How big are they? That doesn't matter anymore because God said, God gave him a specific word. If you'll go after them, you will recover and you'll get it all back. You'll find them. You'll get it all back. So, so, so now the boy leads them there. Don't miss the opportunity to be a blessing because being a blessing, God is going to bless you. The boy says to David, I can show you where they are. The young man discarded doesn't know that now he is going to be used of God in some bigger way. So the, your answer to get back what the enemy stole from you may not look like what you expect. I'm going to close. Verse 16 said that the young man brought David and his men down where the enemy was spread out all, all over the land. They were eating, drinking, and dancing because of all the stuff they had stolen. Illegitimately got. The Bible said in verse 17 that David slaughtered them. 
from twilight until the evening of the next day. The Bible said that only 400 men escaped who rode off on camels and fled. Young men, David wore them out. The enemy that had stolen from them what they had ripped off from him. David recovered everything that the Amalekites had taken from him, his two wives and all his stuff. Nothing was missing. Everything was brought back just as God told him. Even though David lost, it was still there. It was just in the wrong location because the enemy stole it and moved it. The devil may have ripped you off of your joy. It's still there. It just ain't with you because the enemy moved it to another location. Go find it. The devil may have ripped you off of your dreams. The dreams are still there. It's just not with you. You just haven't caught up with it yet. Don't give up. The devil may have ripped you off of your purpose, your, your peace, your relationships. It may look like the devil has won and he wants everything. He's controlling everything and you don't know what you're going to do. You just ain't caught up with him yet. It's still there. In the beginning, we we're told what the enemy took. Nothing was destroyed. Nothing was killed. Nothing was destroyed. It had been preserved in the wrong location. The good news is David brought it all back. Everything the Amalekites had stolen from them, but also everything that the enemy had taken from everybody else, now they got it. If you can just get there. If you can get where your stuff's at, if you can just get there where the enemy's taking your stuff, there's going to be surplus there because God has for you exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you thought you lost. He can give back to you what the locust has taken away. When the enemy steals it, go get it. He can't keep it from you when you, four things, how am I going to take this and how am I going to go from here? How am I going to turn it and become, how am I going to take a defeat and become victorious? The first thing is strengthen yourself in the Lord. Get in His presence. Get in His presence. How can I recover what the enemy's taken? He's taken stuff that I hadn't even, he's holding it up. I can't get to it. Get a direct word from God for your situation. I still believe that God speaks today. I still believe that there are men and women that are prophets of God that you can inquire from them and they'll tell you what you need to know. I still believe that. And if you can't find one, God can just speak to you himself. The third thing, if you're going to get what the enemy stole from you, you got to get up and follow the Lord. you got to do what he said. I told you this before, but when the Lord spoke to me in the middle of the night and said, will you get out of the boat? I, I wanted to ask questions. Well, what happens if I get out of the boat? I ain't going to tell you. What if I stay in the boat? I ain't going to tell you. That ain't fair, God. Now, maybe you're afraid to talk to God, but hey, if God already knows the intent of your heart, they ain't no need to hide it. Go ahead and tell him. Now, God, this ain't fair. You, you said get out of the boat. What happens if I get out of the boat? I ain't going to tell you. What if I stay in the boat? I ain't going to tell you. And I ask God this question. Well, God, which one are you going to bless me in? And here was his response. Do you know what it was? What did you say? Oh, no. He said, I'll bless you in either one. I get to make the choice. I said, okay. I never told Debbie what was going on. We riding around to Ariana, and I said, I guess God just wanted me to jump out of the boat. And she said, do what? <laughs> I said, I guess God just wanted to know would I be willing to jump out of the boat. He said he'd bless me if I stayed in the boat or if I got out of the boat. And I looked at her and said, I'm going to get out of the boat. I may sink, but I'm going to get out of the boat. For me, God said he would bless me if I stayed in the boat or if I got out of the boat. 
Personally, I got out of the boat. He would have blessed me if I would have stayed on Bridgers Avenue. He'd have still blessed me there. He said he would. But I would have missed some things if I wouldn't have come here, Roy. And first of all, what I would have missed, Roy, is I didn't know how good God could take care of you. I've seen some incredible miracles here take place at Legacy. You have to get up and follow the Lord. See, the Lord already has things in place for you. When Debbie and I, when I gave up my salary, I said, I'm just going to give up my salary so the church can make a way. Debbie said, that's fine. What are you going to do? I'm going to get a job. I had a job in 30 minutes. <laughs> I made her go to work with me. We painted for six months. And we were making money with it. And we were paying our bills and eating groceries. And the bottom found, fell out on everything. And so everybody that was in a supervisory capacity was told this. There are no more supervisors. There's workers and laborers. You can go paint apartments or you can go home. <laughs> Debbie and I went home because the supervisor got it. She said, what are you going to do? And I said, well, we'll just trust God. Now, he had already provided for that moment because after... A few years, you were getting ready to go somewhere, and the Lord spoke to you in the bathroom while you were preparing, preparing to get ready that, that I'd already done, done all of this. Not then, because you didn't need it back then with your mother's stuff. You needed it then. I already took care of that. And it came at the right point, did it? I saw God because Debbie and I were willing to just step out I watched God do things that I would have never seen if we would have stayed over on Bridgers Avenue. Now, what else, what else do I have to do if I'm going to get back what the enemy stole? I need to get in his presence. First, don't just run out on a blind. Well, bless God, I can just handle this. No, you can't. You don't know where you're going. Get in the presence of the Lord. And don't you leave the presence of the Lord till you have inquired a word from Him. And don't you leave till He gives you a word. And then when you get that word, you head out the door and you go. And then you got to listen to the blessing along the way that God provided. It will be information you need to get you into the enemy's territory where your stuff is being held hostage. You're going to recover it all what the enemy stole from you. So I'm going to tell you what I told you back in the very beginning of the year. Don't speak what you say. Uh, don't speak what you see. Speak what I said until you see what I did. Now that's God speaking. Don't, don't speak what you see. Well, God's looking bad. God is looking bad. Renee told us not long ago that with, with, uh, uh, with Heather's shoulder, she wouldn't even speak it. People said, how, how y'all doing? We're doing fine. She wouldn't even tell anybody that, that her shoulder's all messed up and maybe possibly got to have surgery. She wouldn't speak it. Don't speak what you see in the physical. I'll never get it back. Enemy stole it. I don't know which way he went. They're bigger than I am. I look like a grasshopper in their sight. They're, they're giants. There's no way I'm going to ever recover it all. They've taken it. I'm just going to give up. I'm not going to do it. They ain't, I'm, not, I'm not going to do a thing. Well, then just sit back and do nothing. I'm not going to sit around and let the enemy have my family. You didn't hear me. I ain't going to sit around and let him. I, I'll pray. I'll fast. I'll do whatever it takes. If I have to build a, uh, if I have to set my tent upside there, outside their front door, I ain't, I ain't just going to walk away. Don't speak what you see. Speak what he said 
Until you see what he did. When he gives you a word, hold on to that word. Proclaim that word. When it looks like you're in your darkest thing, you keep marching around the wall. Keep marching. Don't quit. Don't give up. Speak his word until you see it come to pass. The enemy's purpose is to steal from you, but Jesus said my purpose is to give you life without limits. That's how you turn defeats into victories. That's how you do it. Somebody here today, you've made some mistakes in your life. And you, you did some things, and you're here today, but you, you've been hiding behind a mask, and you're hoping, you're, hope, you're just trying to stay afloat. And, and things aren't working exactly the way you want them to work. And your life is falling apart because you, you, you made some mistakes and you're so worried about them and your life is falling apart. I've come to tell you that he can take the defeats of your everyday life, your moral life, your spiritual life, your physical life. I've come to tell you today that he can take those things. Not just the enemy stole something from you, but you fell. You fell along the way. I've come to tell you he can pick you up and he can set you free. He can deliver deliver you. He can do anything you need for him to do. Don't you quit. Don't you walk away here today. Let me tell you, you may feel defeated in your life because of what you've done, but he can lift you up and set your feet on a solid rock, and he can establish your goings, and he can wash you and make you clean. See, all of this is done by our declaration. Faith sees not, not, not what happened. Faith sees that God said, I can see the end because God said, I'm going to recover it all and I'm going to believe the word of the Lord. You that are sick today, when are you going to believe? The Lord said, by my stripes, you are healed. I think when we get close to the Easter season that that's probably one of the greatest times that healing takes. That's just my opinion because Jesus was beaten and there's something about we get into that Easter season and we start celebrating that he died but he didn't die long. He was up out of the grave on the third day and he conquered the grave. He conquered death. He conquered hell. He conquered my disease. He conquered my sickness. He conquered it all. I do believe you got to believe. Can he do it? You turn defeats into victories because you speak the word that he gave to you.